Dune is a 1984 science fiction film directed by David Lynch. In the distant future, the most important substance is the spice melange. It extends life, grants visions, and can be used for space travel. The Emperor of the Universe gives House Atreides control of the planet Arrakis, the only real source of the spice. His plan is to have them ambushed there by House Harkonnen, the rival of Atreides. Paul Atreides, son of the Duke, is part of a long line in a eugenics program conducted by the mysterious Bene Gesserit. They hope to create a super being called the Quitsatz Haderach. After a series of betrayals and mishaps and deaths, Paul forms a bond with the secret population of Arrakis called the Fremen. Nobody outside their culture knows how great their numbers are. Paul's incredible abilities lead the Fremen to believe he is their messiah. He takes the Fremen name Maudib and teaches them to use sonic weapons. Paul gains the ability to control sandworms and launches an attack against House Harkonnen. A young girl declares that he is indeed the Kwisatz Haderach, and the movie ends. It is deeply confusing. This is partly because there is little connective tissue between scenes. Everything is just air. It is also full of sci-fi spiritualism that is not properly explained. Yet there is some worth in Dune, at least from some of the messaging and themes that transferred over from the source material. In the novels, Paul ascends to a position of Emperor of the Universe and eventually begins to dislike the religion that has been built around him, which may be the whole point of the novel series. Beware of heroes, said Frank Herbert. People can be manipulated into their faith, as the Bene Gesserit exploit religion to protect their own members and spread fabricated legends and prophecies to developing worlds. However, in the film, Paul's role is comparatively more straightforward. His ascension to the messianic figure among the Fremen does not seem devious. He receives visions, he witnesses the hand of God, but who is Paul Atreides meant to be? How does he relate allegorically to religious figures in the real world? Paul Atreides follows in the tradition of other desert prophets, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. While Atreides being referred to as the Messiah might paint him as a Christ figure, his actions and his surroundings more closely parallel those of the Prophet Muhammad. In fact, much of Dune appears to be inspired by the teachings of Islam. A religion in the novel, for example, is called Zen Sunni, an amalgamation of Zen Buddhism and Sunni Islam. Paul is a prophet and a warrior. He leads a desert society to military victory and lays the foundation of what would become a new empire. This parallels Muhammad. Armed conflict broke out between the Meccan pagans and the Muslims. Muhammad permitted the Muslims to fight the Meccans. He even led some 300 warriors in a raid on the Meccan merchant caravan. One might claim that even Paul's Fremen name, Maudib, resembles that of Muhammad, but it's actually an Arabic word for something else. It's not a one-to-one -one parallel, but the influence is obvious. Many of the names in the film have etymologies in Arabic, the language of the Quran. Aliyah, Paul's younger sister, bears the same name of one of the queens of Jordan. The masculine form, Ali, was a relative of Muhammad. The Fadikan, who are the armed Fremen soldiers, seem to take their name from the Arabic word Fadiyin, meaning those willing to sacrifice themselves for God. In the film, the word jihad is used, but only in the way that the word is mistakenly rendered in English, as holy war, which it is not. Jihad simply means struggling or striving towards a righteous goal. In Islam, it actually can mean struggling internally with one's own morality or striving towards the betterment of society. It can also mean an armed struggle, yes, but that is only one aspect of the word. It would be akin to saying the English word service always means military service. The word jihad appears many times in the Quran with and without military connotations, often in phrases roughly translated as striving in the path of God or striving for the sake of God. In the film, the Fremen are motivated by their faith and by Paul to bring about a better Arrakis. At the time of Herbert's writing, jihad had yet to become such a twisted word in the Western world. Dune was written in 1965, before guerrilla jihadism became known due to the Soviet war in Afghanistan. Herbert's usage probably comes from a more genuine struggle for human improvement. There are countless other examples of Arabic words and figures from the Quran, but in short, Dune borrows a lot from Islam to present its world. Herbert's work insisted on not following heroes, but trusting in oneself. 
But the film does not really show this. Instead, it is very much the hero's journey. We even get a happy ending with Paul commanding the heavens to reign, even though that will ruin the spice trade. Science fiction that takes place in the distant future usually portrays humanity as a more secular society. But Dune shows religion as existing far into the future and spreading across the universe, not as a means of enlightenment, but as a system of control by a select few. Dune presents an antiquated universe rather than progressive. Its futuristic political system is based on the medieval feudal system. Dukes and barons rule outer space, and control passes down from one relative to the next in line. Inheritance and royal nepotism not only exists, but has proliferated itself across known space. After the death of Duke Leto, Paul becomes the Duke, for example. Everything in Dune that is prized is actually damaging, which may have been the author's intent. The spice is the substance that everyone in the universe wants, but its existence is the source of incredible conflict. It can be used as a drug, but that also means it is highly addictive. It can be used as a method to transport ships from one part of the universe to another, but wars will be fought over it. The parallel to conflict in desert regions of the real world, fought over oil, is apparent. Dune casts a traditionalist and patriarchal version of future events. The Bene Gesserit's plans are thwarted when those who they were controlling through manipulated bloodlines decide against their wishes and produce a son instead of a daughter. Science fiction generally presents science as the key to progress, amazing spaceships and utopian societies, but Dune is the opposite. Religion is the key to control. Only men may rule, and universal imperialism is the unquestioned standard. The imperial power is primarily concerned just with maintaining itself more than the universe, and that is also true of the houses even the comparatively more noble house Atreides. Galactic powers are more concerned with pure bloodlines and inheritance than anything else. Dune is more Game of Thrones than Star Trek. Dune's setting is the distant future, but its prophecies are of the near future. What the 1960s and even the 1980s of the film would consider things to come, like the return of the acceptance of imperialism and outmoded political ideas that should have long passed into the ether. Hi everyone, if you like what I do, consider clicking on the orange Patreon link below. That's how this show happens. It's also a way for you to request an episode, so check it out.